All right, welcome back to another edition of Sling Pen Gaming. I'm just going crazy. I'm actually doing a lot of videos tonight because I'm actually... Everybody's sleeping in my house. So, shh. My wife's sleeping right behind me. My kids are sleeping. So, I was like... I've been up all day trying to do um, some extra reactions. I was actually at the hospital today. Where my grandmother got ill. Uh, but she's okay. Everybody's good. She checked out okay. But I was at the hospital all day. So, I was just sitting there... Um, try to get some ideas for tonight that I want the video just in case if I didn't get back or did get back and we're not streaming live at the store. But you know what we haven't done in a while? A long time was an actual list review, a Listinator review. All right, if you guys don't know what the Listinator is on our community forum, we actually have a spot for X Wing Listinators where you can submit your lists and then people just talk about your list and ask questions and what have you. So I got an interesting list that. It's actually kind of near and dear to my own heart here. Um, you know, when the U-Wings came out, all right, I my first reaction was, like, I want to put four U-Wings on the table and see what I can do with fire control systems with the title, the Pivot A-Wing title, and just see what we can do and see what we can make happen. Um, ironically, I, I got, only got two U-Wings. Oh, actually, I got four, but gave one to NIMS as... as uh, as payment for his services. Uh, uh, it was this part of the whole sling paint goodness. We get our ships. I got two U-Wings, and I got a third one, uh, a fourth one, but the fourth one actually went to a um, one of our... Um, People, local uh, players, uh, kid came by and asked me, and uh, and he says, "Oh, Berto, can I have one of the U wings?" And I'm like, "No, no, but I let you, see, you know, here, take a look at it. I'm actually going to be building a list and all that stuff." And then he took the U wing, he walked away, and he basically said, "Oh, look what, look what Berto gave me a U wing," and I didn't have the heart to take it and say, uh, "No, I wasn't giving it to you." And I was talking to his father, we were joking around, and the father's like, "Oh, but you know, let me give you money for." It. I'm like, "No, no, no, no." I said, "You know, he's always been a good." You know, good guy, and he was on one of our streams. And if you guys know him, he's Griffin. He's one of our uh, videos that we have here where he wanted to do kind of a. He yeah, did three T70s with Jess Papa versus My Baby Blues, and he won. I'm just I don't know how he won, but he did actually. He did legitly won. All right, so let's talk about this list. All right, I'm gonna bring this up. All right, this is on a form. The links in the list are below. If you guys want to chat about this list, um, I usually always take a look at the listinator, and I always look at it, and I love it. I want to do more list reviews again. Uh, I got Endo Pro Games is online here. I got One Warriors on. Uh, we got actually a bunch of people starting to come back in here. But let's bring up this list, list review. And this list is called the U-Wing Strike Team, and this is the actual list right here. Um... And Kenneth Franks, uh, Sergeant Rafin, who is on our board, he's an active community member, post lists and what have you. Uh, he says right here on the thing, it says, being stubborn person and always trying to find ways to bring ordnance into my games, I came up with this list for new Ewings, just fun, casual list for blank and giggles. Well, I'm allowed to say it, so shits and giggles is my channel, I can do whatever I want. All right, so shits and giggles, he came up with this list. I put this list in the listinator, and basically, here's what it's got. All right, so I'm going to give if you guys don't know how these list reviews work, this is how. We give the breakdown, the tweaks, how would we fly it, and how we would fly against it. This is some old school stuff that we wanted to bring back and talk about lists. Um, and then also, I want to add a new section to that. So breakdown, tweaks, how do we fly it, how do we fly against it. I'm going to also add how you know how can it go up against meta okay what's the current meta out there and what have you Seamus is online here too what's up Seamus all right so let's talk about this list so he's got three u-wings uh, and i was going to originally do four u-wings right and in this list he's got cassian endor and the one u-wing he's got and then two blue squadron pathfinders with cassian all right, he says, and you know, Cassian's ability says, at the start of the activation phase, you may remove one stress token from one other friendly ship at range one to two. Um, and he's got a whole loadout of this ship. He's running the card that we just talked about it. If you want to talk about it, let's discuss expertise card. Check out the previous video for this uh, in our channel, and we talk about the expertise card itself. But he's got the expertise card, which is basically when attacking, if you are not stressed, you may change all of your focus results to hit results. Um, he's also running fire control systems, which just makes sense. I mean, it's like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, when you have a system slot, 
and maybe a large base ship or any system slot, nine times out of ten, you're probably going to want to run fire control systems. It's almost like a free target lock. Um, after you attack somebody, you get that tar target lock established. It's great. Uh, he's also, this is interesting. So for, cr um, for before we go into crew, he's also running advanced proton torps. Now Cassian, before actually, actually before I get into advanced proton torps, we can give the rundown. Cassian's at a six policy skill value. So he's just a little above the middle of the ground field, but it's nice, you know, especially in today's meta, he's kind of, um, you know, if you're running, if you see, you know, Countess Riot out there, Riot is still running around. If you see some lawful rebels, what have you, I mean, it's right above in that mixture where you might get some maneuverability out of it, or you might want to move first or shoot. Uh, you might be able to move last and from some positioning, especially with the pivot wing title. But like I said, it's right in the middle of the ground. He's running, you know, three attack, one agility, four hull, four shield. Actions got to focus on the target lock. The upgrades got an elite system torpedo crew, double crew slots. Um, and look at that maneuver dial. If you guys, whoops, what happened? I just lost it. Look at that maneuver dial. You can see the maneuver dial. It's actually not that bad. It's very Lambda class shuttle ish. Um, uh, it's. It's got the four-speed maneuver, which is actually pretty nice on a large on a large base ship. Uh, it's got the three bank, uh, no three hard turn, but it's got the three bank, three straight, uh, and they're all green maneuvers because Neen Nub makes the three and the four uh, a green maneuver. But the one and two straight and bank maneuvers are green maneuvers, and then he's got the awesome kick-ass stall, and that's kind of tied to the pi uh, the title card, which. <laughs> It's actually pretty kick-ass, and we'll get into that in a sec here. But that's kind of low down. All right, so we go back to Advanced Proton Torpedoes. Advanced Proton Torpedoes, it's an attack, requires a target lock. So that's where fire control systems comes into play. All right, spend your target lock, so you have to actually physically spend it, and discard this card to perform this attack. The cool part about it is it says you may change up to three of your blank results to focus results. Okay? Um the focus results, and then you have the expertise card on top of it, which changes the focus results to hit results. Um, so now, I was going back and forth with people, because once you modify a die, are you able to modify the die again? But because you can spend a focus token to change blank results on this, right, expertise is like a focus token, so you basically can actually... You know, do it. Oh, and oh, Sergeant Rafins, oh my god, he actually decided to review it. <laughs> yes, I'm actually reviewing this because I love this list. This is actually a pretty cool list. All right, so Advanced Proton Torpedoes, you may change up to three of your blank results to focus results. The only rub here is where I know you can spend the focus token to change that. So you're changing blank results to focus results, and you can only change modify dice once. So you can re-roll. But actually, no, you, I'm sorry, you're actually allowed to... You can only re-roll once. I think you're allowed to modify as much as you can. Okay, forget what I just said. Um, there's so many damn rules to this. When you have, when your games start having flowcharts, right, which X-Wing finally has a flowchart on actually how to attack somebody, um, that's when the games start getting complicated and you gotta remember all the rules. So Advanced Proton Torpedoes works, synergizes with ex, uh, Expertise nicely. Fire Control synergizes with Advanced Pro Proton Torpedoes. So in the knee nub and the pilot, you may treat all straight maneuvers as green maneuvers. So that basically opens up the three and four speed maneuvers as straight maneuvers. Then you got one of the new cards that comes with the U-Wing, which is Bistain. He's one of the characters of the new Rogue One movie. And it says, when attacking at range one or two, you may change one of your hit results to a crit result. Love it. So you can actually upgrade one of your hit results to a crit result to send that lovely extra damage through, which is nice. And then you got Guidance Chips, which is once per round when attacking with a torpedo or missile secondary weapon, you may change one of your die results to a hit result or a crit result if your primary weapon is three or, uh, three or higher. Guess what? That's another extra crit. <clears throat> so this combination I'm really liking. Now, Advanced Proton Torpedoes, the only negative side to this um, it is at range one, but with the nasty shenanigans of the U-Wing and this awesome kick-ass title, Pivot Wing, all right? Pivot Wing, this it's a double-sided um, card. It's just like adaptability where you have two sides on it, and you actually have to flip it depending on the different situations. <clears throat> um, side A, attack. Increase your agility by one. After you execute a maneuver, you may flip this card. Keyword, may flip this card. Side B is landing. When you reveal a zero-stop maneuver, you may rotate your ship 180 degrees. After you execute a maneuver, you may, again, flip this card. 
So I love this. I've been flying some of the U-Wings, and you guys seen some of the videos that we that have posted up about flying the U-Wings. I'm still figuring out that niche with this whole pivot wing. I usually fly it with the B landing side, side B facing up when I start the game. And I usually keep it on that. I very rarely switch to the attack to increase my agility because I actually like the maneuverability of the landing. I like that I can maybe, if I do zero stop, I may be able to rotate my ship 180 degrees. Um, and if I execute maneuver, I may want to flip it to help me with my agility. Again, keyword may. But, you know, and then playing this card right is got you is the timing has got to be perfect. So you just got to practice and play with it and see what happens. But that is the Cassian loadout. All right. And I'm going to get back to it on how and how we fly it and how it all works and this and that. But I love this loadout because everything synergizes with itself. You got advanced proton torpedoes, which is basically change up the three blanks to focus results. You got expertise allowing you to change those focus results to hit results. All right, so you got your blanks covered, you got your focuses covered, and then on top of it, all right, you got some crit magic here. You got Bistain with a crit, a range one to two, um, attacking range one to two, which synergizes with the advanced proton torpedoes because you're at range one. Um, you're spending the target lock from fire control systems, but you don't need the target lock to modify dice because you got all these shenanigans with guidance chips, and guidance chips is also changing any die to a crit result. So you may change. Um, because you're attacking a three, because you're natively attacking a three attack dice, you can change it to a crit. So you got potentially two crits going down. You got all your focuses, all your blanks, majority of your blanks, let's say, are switching. So when you're throwing that five dice advanced proton torps, you're guaranteed to stro almost guarantee, I want to say 90, probably 8% percentage. Yeah, Ben Jackson just said it. Alpha strike mayhem. It's exactly what this is. Um, that's a lot of dice. And that's, a, I mean, you almost 90% of the time, you, you're going to get three hits and two crits based on this combination. That's nasty. And if you time it right, all right, you, uh, actually I'll talk about how, when you, when you want to do that at alpha attack, a uh, keyword, because there's different combinations that you can do here. And when you want to time it and what have you, there's two ways of going about it. Let me go back to down to the other two lists. All right, so the other breakdown for these U-Wings are you got two identical U-Wings, fire control systems, proton torps, pivot A-Wing title, and guidance chips. Same thing. The only thing um, that you have with the blue squadron is it's a, it's a pilot skill value of two, so it's low. These are good for blocking. These are good for moving first, blocking some, sh uh, some stuff, or... I like it with the pivot wing title when you set it to the landing section. If you put it onto the B side, you know, I've screwed with, I mean, if you probably don't watch that one game when I played Blake, you know, he thought so many times, oh, I thought you were going to stall. I thought you were going to do this. I thought you were going to do that. It opens up the dial so much. I love it. Um, but with proton torps, so this is a little bit different than advanced proton torps. Proton torps are on the other end of the spectrum. So instead of range one with the advanced proton torpedoes, these is range two to three, and you're only four, slinging four dice. Four dice is still nasty, all right? But it does require you to t uh, spend the target lock. So spend the target lock, discard this card to perform this attack. You may change one of your focus results to a crit result, which is nice. Um, uh, and then proton torps... Uh, I'm sorry, Guidance Chips, again, allows you to change one of your dice. So if you want to change one of your blank dice, you can change that to a crit because you are a wet primary weapon value three or higher, so you can change that to a crit. So basically, with between Proton Torps and Guidance Chips, with four dice slinging, you potentially have room for a blank and a focus to be changed and modified to help you out. So this is... It's great. And you have two of those bad boys. And the stat line, with because you're rolling four, uh, four hull, four, um, four shields, they're a little bit beefy. They can take some hits. So I, 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 like, I like the, like I said, it just it opens up a whole bunch of different shenanigans. All right, tweaks. Let's go into the tweak section. How would I tweak this? <clears throat> I, you know, I probably wouldn't tweak this that much. You know, I, knowing that I'm flying two big, you know, th I'm sorry, three big ships, you know, and one of them is a, is a pilot skill value of six, and the other was a twos. Knowing that, you know, I probably fly them in formation. Um, I might fly the two U wings, you know, up front, you know, so I wouldn't actually change that much. And when I get to how to fly, I'll talk more about how I would load it out, how I, I would uh, use the attack. 
um, and use the you know use the secondary weapons and stuff. But I you know I really wouldn't change anything. I like Bistain on this. <laughs> I like Nee Nub on this because um, on Cassian Endor's and I like Cassian Endor's ability. I mean, removing stress tokens that helps with the path the other um, the other Pathfinder ships if they do do a stop and you want to remove one of the stress tokens that helps out. Fire control systems again like peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly, you know, it, when you have a system slot and you want to fill it with something nice, fire control systems, especially with a ship that has primary weapon uh, of three or higher, it's again, it's like peanut butter and jelly. Synergizes very, very well. All right. So now let's talk about how this list actually would fly. <clears throat> now, my thoughts on it, I played the playing. I had two. I actually had uh, a, I think a video on two U wings and two T seventies, and then I think I had another video on two U wings and a ghost. Um, I'm actually want to do a video. I, I got to get two more U wings, but I have two U wings now. I want to do a video on four U wings and also three U wings. And I'm actually, if I do the three U wings, I actually might load it out just like this. Now, a lot of people say, are saying like, well, you know, these ships, it's like flying three jump masters or flying double ghost. You know, you just, you just got to pray for the best and make sure you get into arcs and you don't get arc dodged. You know, now granted it, it's, you know, it's got some big donuts that they're large base ships. Um, but that pivot wing title, so this is how I would fly it. So how I would fly this is this line, those two, um, uh, blue squadron pathfinders right next to each other, side by side. I'm on the, either on the left side or on the right side. And I like running those ships on the left or the right. And reason why either side doesn't make a difference. And a lot of it, the difference is because of the asteroid or, or debris placement, I want these things to fly a little bit, so I want some astro I want some space to maneuver. So depending, and you're probably going to put these down these ships down first, so you can set the stage as far as where these things are going to go. Wherever there's the less rocks, I would probably line that up on it again because you want some maneuverability and be able to move these ships around. Um, at the same time, I want where if I'm moving up on the left hand side of the board or the right hand side of the board, and I start banking in. I want on that back board, the back middle section of the board, as on my opponent's side, to be clear of rocks um, or div or free of rocks. Because if I want to do the pivot wing action and stall and turn around or whatever the case would be, that that's I want some maneuverability of that. Now Cassian, where would I put Cassian on this? Well, with Cassian's ability, right, it says at the start of the activation, at the start of the activation phase, you may remove one stress token from one other friendly ship. So keyword at the start of the activation phase. Um, the nice part about this, all right, so if you have planning, then activation, combat, then end phase, right? You can still have a stress token on an, on an, on a friendly ship within range one of two, and you can remove it to start of the activation phase. So you can have that ship that was going to do potentially another red maneuver or whatever the case may be. You can, as long as you have Cassian nearby, and that's where I want to put, and that's why I want to have Cassian nearby, you can remove a stress token so they can potentially do a double stall, right? Do you hear me on that one? You can have one of your other U wings potentially do a double stall, right? Just because of Cassian's ability, all right? Yeah, uh, Sergeant Raven says Berto plays with the four baby blues. Um, Mutha Boop, he says, does anyone play with four T70s? It's a good buy. Yeah, I actually. I'm the king of the baby blues. <laughs> yeah, if you actually watch a lot of my flight videos, I'm actually looking at the chat here. I'm talking um, a, a four T70s, four baby blues, four T7 uh, blue squadron novice pilots. I actually like those a lot. I learned a lot. If you actually watch my other videos, my strategy videos, my formation flying videos, you'll definitely see um, my baby blue action. And you'll, there's a lot of videos of the baby blues flying. Um, the four B, four baby four T70 X wing ships are nasty and that's why i actually want to do four u-wings i think it's just that why not right it's it's the big baby blue it's baby baby ueys um so what um getting back to how i would fly this the biggest thing with this is lining those ships up probably lining the two blue uh pathfinders pointing pointing straight and then having cassian i want to say about a template, maybe two away, and I, you got to practice this lineup. And this is something that I want to try, but I want Cassian to come in behind the the actual blue pathfinders. I want him. He's going to be shooting first, but he's going to be moving last. So your 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 pathfinders are going to move first, and then you have Cassian come in behind, sneak behind, and then 
you know, maneuver in a way where you give enough maneuverability. But now when you're maneuvering how to fly this, I would start slow, right? Do the one, uh, one forward on both your other ships. If that, that will give enough space for Cassian to slip under. I would probably do a one with the Cassian. So he's, let's say if you're lined up on the left-hand side, right? And then you have your two pathfinders going straight up. I would have Cassian to the right of the other pathfinder, to the rightmost pathfinder, and then doing a one forward. So as they do one forwards, he's doing a one forward. And then the next turn, you're, you're turning into it where you have enough space when you turn into where the two pathfinders are moved up enough. Um, slow I think is what is very important with these ships. A lot of people like, because they see the four speed maneuver on this dial, they want to rush in. Um, for me, I think the biggest games that I've, I'm sorry, the, the most challenging games that I've won against, you know, meta type lists, either with double ghost or triple hounds or any of the big ships that I used to fly going slow stalling or going slow actually works to my benefit um allows me to see what my what my opponent's doing allows to do different things so i would actually definitely probably try um to slow things up and just move those you know those blue pathfinders up one have cassian come in underneath that then as cassian does a two turn Right, I believe if it does a two turn and your other sh and your U wings do another one forward, it should have enough room to come into behind the um, the two U wings. And as you're moving up, again, some practice and placement um, would definitely try it. But I used to do this with the triple hounds, or line all three of them up and maybe Cassian the furthest away and have two of the uh, pathfinders. Now, depending on where the rocks are, two of the pathfinders on the inner side of the board and Cassian on the outer, depending on which side you want to line up. But slow rolling it. Now, the key is when you're slow rolling it. You know, do you want to fire your munitions first? My first thing is probably not. I don't, you know, if if I get into range one with Cassian, right, it's, honestly, it, my first thought was Cassian's behind these other ships and I'm moving up, right? The only way the other ships are going to get into, into range one is that they try to fly past me. Now, depending who I'm going up against, if I'm flying up against other big ships, I would create the traffic jam and then have Cassian light them up, right? Use the advanced proton torpedoes, get the target lock as your action. Uh, make sure you don't bump so you can still get the target lock. If you do bump, you know, use the fire control systems and fire that advanced proton torpedoes the next turn, but use the pivot, pivot wing title. Now, this is where the pivot wing title comes into play. So the pivot wing title, this is what I love about the U-wing. When you reveal that zero stop maneuver, you may rotate your ship 180 degrees. So you're doing a stall, Pivot 180 degrees. So as the other ships are flying by you, you're pivoting. Now, since you already volleyed attack, you more likely have a have a target lock on them because of fire control systems. So as those other ships are going past you, or resetting, or doing 4K turns, or talent rolls, whatever the heck they're doing, right? Or they're, they're venturing off. That pivot is brutal. And if you can make it where use the rocks and debris to your advantage where you know where your opponent's going to go, where they're going to either maneuver to or turn around or do a K-turn or a talent roll or a sloop, whatever you think they're going to do, having that that zero stop and that uh, landing card already available and you can rotate your ship 180 degrees is, is, is awesome because it's then you can, because you already established a target lock for previously from the previous turn of attacking. Then you can fire your advanced proton torpedoes, or and if you're in your if you're using Cassia, you potentially might get off your advanced proton uh, your advanced proton torpedoes for your Cassia, and then for Blue Squadron Pathfinders, your regular proton torpedoes because they'll be just past them. And that's why if I move the Pathfinders up like this and Cassian behind, right? If all the other ships blow by me and I do my pivot wing 180 degree turns, right, Cassian more likely will probably be in range one of those enemy ships. And the best part is the back guys might be in range two, probably two ish with um, with the proton torpedoes. So I, that's I like that. I mean, it gives you flexibility. Play with that pivot uh, with pivot wing card though. Some people said that okay, after you do you know you use zero stop maneuver, you should automatically switch it, increase your agility by one to help out defensively. I've been I played both both ways honestly. It's like I, I can you know it depends on who I'm going up against and what have you. So it really depends, but just get some practice with that pivot wing. See when you can do it, when you can't do it. 
but it is nasty. If you can master it, I, I was able to, like when I was playing Blake, I was able to do some sick maneuvers where he didn't think I was going to go there. You know, he was shooting, I was flying the two U-wings with two T-70s, and he was shooting my two T-70s, and I am just kept bumping my U-wings. Oh, and bumps? Don't be afraid to bump your U-wings. Because of fire control systems, you're getting some dice modifications. And if you do the U-wing ability, um, if you start with your attack, the attack side up on pivot A-wing, you're increasing your agility, so you're getting some defense of that, you know, some defensive ability for, from the the actual title card as well. So just keep that in mind. I mean, this, there's a lot of things going with that pivot wing, and, and it freaks people out too because they also is he going to stall? Is he he's going to do the 180 right now? Well, if he does the 180 and my backs to them and I didn't do a K turn, let's say if I'm soon tier or some other ace and I'm not K turning, I'm actually just flying around. Well, that's going to hurt if his backs you know to me. And then with this ships having the two hard turn as a white turn, it's that's just nasty too. I ran one of my blue squadron uh, pathfinders with stress all over it. I couldn't do the the, the title, um, but if I knew I was stressing myself out and I was going to potentially stay stressed, I flipped my title when I was able to flip my title when I first did the stall. My stress stayed and my stress kept on staying. I was doing two turns, but I increased my agility. By um by one, so I was helping myself that way too. So it's just a whole bunch of madness that goes on with that. And the proton torps and the advanced proton torps. The key thing is making sure that you're able to you know to fire that off. Cassian is going to be extremely nice, and they're probably going to be going for that first. So now let's get into how would we fly against this? Okay. U wings, like I said, I've been flying U wings already, and I already flown a couple against a couple U wings. They're just they're nasty. They're tanks, the little miniature tanks. All right, you know they're not like a ghost where there's zero agility and you got a lot of hole and shoot. I mean, they got some agility, they got one agility, and if you have the title, you know, with the attack side where you're increasing your agility. I mean, it's not. I mean, and nine times out of ten, you they may focus down because they have the fire control system, so it might help them out from a defensive perspective. But there was times I threw dice at the U-Wing and made only one or two hits get through. And, you know, with eight, you know, with four hull and four shields, it takes that's going to take several turns. And then when you have two of them, or three of them in this case, that's a lot of health to chew up, right? So just keep that in mind, that 24 health, that's a lot to chew through. A lot of people, you know, you got to remember, like if you're flying aces, right, you got Soon Tier that's got only three hull, right? You got Vader that might have two and two, right? And then you're having a shuttle that has what, four and five, five and five whatever, off the top of my head. Um, but the, a lot of the aces don't have that, you know, don't have the luxury of a lot of health. So this is a lot of health to chew through. But flying against this, if I saw this list and I saw Cassian and I chose two blue squadron pathfinders, I definitely want to go for Cassian first. And I definitely want to stay out of friggin' that range one shot. Because if he gets that range one in arc shot, advanced proton torpedoes, and he's got the the, the fire control systems there, you got the talk off from the previous turn, I'm going to be hurting. Yeah, shut, um, shuttle is five and five. Thanks, uh, thanks, Poop. Um, but that, just keep that in the back of your mind. It's like, you know, when you're flying against this and you see this, just remember, these things are little miniature tanks. That's why I love my T-70s. You know, my T-70s, everybody like, oh, you know, four, but they're little miniature tanks, those T-70s. They can take a hit or two um, and keep flying and then do some damage, too, especially when you focus fire. And that's the key thing to this thing is I would also focus fire. So be careful of that. Try to, if you're flying against it, try to always be, know that they're probably going to stay in a group as much as they can for as long as they can. So if they're going to stay in the group, try to maneuver your ships um, where you're not in the group as much, where you're not in, in one of group, because if you have three U sh uh, three U wings, especially with the ordnance that it has shooting at you, you're gonna be hurting. You're gonna have a bad day, and that ship's potentially gonna go down or gonna go down pretty fast. If you have like a Lancer or um, or turreted ship like Millennium Falcon, this and that, just just do the whole bird thing, fall on the outside, and just peck at them. Um, they will go down, um, especially if you can change up your maneuvers a little bit where you're a little bit unpredictable. Uh, but uh, I've seen, and I was actually talking to somebody about, they had four Y-Wings with TLT and uh, versus U-Wings. Because U-Wings has the one agility, they were able to rip through them like butter. I mean, basically, four Y-Wings versus one U-Wing, focus fire, they're going to go down real fast. Think about it, that's eight... If you're doing four Y-Wings, that's potentially two damage per turn uh, per Y-Wing 
um, that's a total of 8 damage, that's 8 health. So a lot of turrets will eat these ships up. <clears throat> so I think you're going to see some turrets come back. Uh, one or two maybe in your list. You know, somebody might have a turreted ship. Or like a Millennium Falcon. Or um, a Lancer Pursuit Craft. Um, like an Asajj or something to help out with that. Also, stress mechanics. You, we, we just did a whole video. whole entire video on Expertise card. And he's running the Cassian with the Expertise card. Stress mechanics is going to be a pain in the butt. Also, if you have a stress mechanic ship, like an R3A2 stress bot Y-Wing or something, or something running Tactician, um, or a Saj putting out stress, um, this will shut down that pivot card. Okay, because if they're stuck on that pivot Y-Wing side, that, um, where is it? On the landing side, when you reveal a, a zero-stop maneuver, you may rotate your ship 180 degrees. If they're stuck on that and they're stressed, all right, they're going to be stuck, and they can't do that that pivot. So there's, the only way they can fly around the board is doing the too hard turn, trying to get back into the action. So keep that in mind. Also keep that in mind that these are big ships. So you're going to want to play rocks, right? You want these, these, these ships to be landing on rocks. Or, actually, you know what? I'm thinking about it now. Debris fields will probably work just as well. So either way, um, if we get the stress mechanics onto these ships, it shuts down their, their title card. Um, if you get the stress mechanics on Cassie and shuts down his expertise... Uh, the only thing, though, that's got going for them is fire control systems. So they will have target locks on your ships. So if you know that, um, try to break up your ships. Where, where If they have fire control systems, um, they just fired at your ship, ship A, let's say. And when they shot at ship A, right, make sure ship A gets out of the fight. Because that target lock that sits on ship A, right, is going to stay on ship A. All of a sudden, ship B, your other ship, your ship B comes into play. Guess what? There's no target lock. Now, if they're stressed and you have some stress mechanics, they're not going to be able to modify stuff. I definitely wish you go for Cassian. Like I said before, Cassian is probably the one ship I would want to shoot at first because he's got expertise, because he's got Bistain, because he's got Mean Nub on it. There's a lot of nastiness on it that I would probably want to go for Cassian first. But remember that he's going to probably think that you're going to be going Cassian first as well, too. So be careful of where you position yourself. Don't leave yourself hanging. And watch out for those large base ships because they definitely bump, and they love to freaking bump. I actually like to bump my U-Wings on purpose. I bumped my, I was flying the two U-Wings in the T-70s. If you watch that video, I actually bumped myself on purpose because um, for positioning purposes. I want to base, be able to... Uh, lock myself up and let my fire control systems and let all the people in front of me and I, I have my locks on them and I can shoot them and just keep shooting at them. Just throwing dice at them. They can maneuver around the bar as long as I don't care if it's range 1, 2, or 3. I have my fire control. I'm just going to keep shooting at them. 3 dice. If it's in range 1, it's 4 dice. It's just nasty. So keep that in your mind that these guys will occupy, occupy a lot of space. So keep that in your mind. Um... Why do they, uh, Martha Boop was a question on our stream here. It says, why do they call them K-turns, not U-turns? Good question. It's called a Cory again to turn. So the actual, they abbreviate it, um, uh, to a K-turn instead of a U-turn. But yeah, it's, but it's just a, an X-Wing thing. And so that's how they named it. Um, but it's actually called a Cory again turn, uh, and they call it a K-turn for sure, for short. Um, all right, so getting back to, so that was, we did the breakdown, we did the tweaks, we did the how would I would fly it and how would I fly against it. Now, I'm gonna, the new section I'm going to talk about is meta. All right, so how would this list do in the meta? So right now, what, I mean, honestly, actually, you know what, let's do this. I was not going to do this, but let's do this anyway. I'm going to do, I'm going to pull up list juggler. Let me pull up list juggler. And I'm going to do the time series chart here in List Juggler. And if you guys know what List Juggler is, List Juggler is um, the place where a lot of tournaments upload their data. So all the lists, all the the rankings, the Swiss rounds, the championship rounds, or any of the X-Wing tournaments, or however they do the tournaments or what the tournament structure is, um, gets uploaded to List Juggler. And you can actually get to see who was first, second, third, fourth place, who they played, what they play against, what was their rankings, what was their points overall, how they fare overall. And on top of it, you get to see lists. You get to see when waves drop, which ships are being played, which ships go away, which uh, which is the type of the meta. It's crazy. So let me pull this up. Let me swing to this to this video right here. Come on. Why not? You're switching. This thing is crazy. There we go. Nope, nope. I want to back that. That 
And there we go. You guys can see that now. All right, so this is List Juggler. Again, if you want to browse attorneys, I'm not going to go into List Juggler and how it works, but this is a freaking awesome tool if you want to see what kind of the meta around here. Now, with so many waves and expansions that we have, it's definitely all over the place. But And this is worldwide, too. So this is including tournament types, store championships, vassal play, regionals, nationals, world championships. This is all the meta from around the world that people submit. So... <clears throat> What is the meta right now, right? So that everybody, the number one question I think we always get asked is, you know, you know, what's good against this this list because that's the top meta list. So right now, um, you know, these are the top ships that are being used in the current meta right here, right now, as we speak. Now this is over time, and this is when the waves dropped. Actually, they haven't updated for the other additional waves have been dropping, but you can see right here that the Tide Defender, which is the black right here, definitely increased over time, and it's still getting a lot of play action. The Jump Masters is still getting a lot of play action, so that's basically your Dangaroos. The Triple Jump Masters is probably right here when it became real big, but then it died down as the regular Jump Masters. Now it's just probably just Dangaroo which is Dangar and Manaru combinations. Or you can see like a Manor, old Fenaru, which is old Terak, um, Fenrau, and Manaru uh, in a Jumpmaster combinations. But Jumpmaster is still getting a lot of play. But Tide Defenders is probably the biggest um, chunk of the pie right now as far as your meta. Right behind it is the Ghost. You still see a lot of Ghosts. All right, YV six sixes are coming back. So that's all the party buses. So when you see Dangar, Forlom, and Zuckus on a on a on a big YV66 ship. That's the party bus. The Decimator is getting some action and coming back. Um, the X-wing, the actual X-wing itself, um, is uh, not the T70, but the original X-wing uh, is getting action. I mean, reason why is because that helps. There is um, not wedge. Um, oh, uh, there's Bigs. That's big that everybody plays. There's also um, Wes, who strips tokens and allows you to not use tokens. That helps against the defenders. The other big thing is the aggressor. Some of the IGs were coming back for a little bit, but they um, looks like they're dying back down. Tie interceptors, soon to your fell, you name it. Tie advanced prototype, which is the Inquisitor. Uh, it's probably the lowest out of this batch here, and then most. This is what actually I'm actually kind of happy about. You're seeing the freighter come back, which is Dash, right? So taking this this list and throwing up against the Dangaroos, throwing it up against the Palp Defenders or the Triple or the Triple Defenders, uh, throwing it up against a YT freighter. These are the things that you need to think about when you're going up against these lists. You're going to see these lists in the competitions and tournaments. Now, look at the pilots, okay? These are the top pilots going on right now. So, the, right now, the top pilot is Dangar, which is in black right here. Countess Ryad is getting a lot of play. Colonel Vessery. Ryad and Vessery are both um, TIE defenders. Manaru is the jump master. Lothal Rebel is the is the, the ghost. The Inquisitor is the TIE advanced um uh, Tie Advanced Prototype. Dash Rendar is the freighter, the YT2400 uh, freighter. Bosk is, is the the big uh, YV666 uh, party bus. And Rear Admiral Chinaru, Chirio, whatever. I have always butchered that name. You guys are going to yell at me again. Uh, Rear Admiral uh, is the, the Decimator. So see, these are the biggest pilots that are being played the most right now. Compare that to the ships. So Tide Defenders, Dangaroo, uh, party bus combinations with contracted scouts. Um, your aces are still there. Um, so I mean, you don't see though. If you you have the Inquisitor, but you don't see soon to your fell and this and that on this top list as far as the top pilots being used. That's an interesting. Uh, and here's the upgrades. I'm not gonna go through the upgrades, but between. The ships that are being played and the pilots being played, it's pretty clear. So know that you're going up against. You know, if you're taking your three U-Wings and you're going to go up against a party bus scout combination, or if you're going to go up against TIE Defenders, what are TIE Defenders known for? They're 4K turns. You know, what is Countess Ryad's ability? You know, she's to be able to, you know, know that and how you go up against that. I believe the U-Wings, especially with Cassian's, you know, um, shenanigans, um, with his ability and removing stress, if you keep them close to the other squadron, that's a lot of firepower to shoot. But just remember... That they can maneuver around you if they're going to be in the tide defender, they can potentially barrel roll out of your way or 4K behind you. This is where the pivot wing comes into play. This is actually can help 
um, going up against tight defenders. Now, the only negative side to that is the tight defenders have um, that if they're running the tie X7 card, which is basically giving them the free evade token if they're running uh, three, four, five speed maneuvers. And if they're doing a 4K turn, which is a white maneuver to begin with, they're getting an action on top of getting a free evade token. Um, so keep that in mind. Yeah, I do say Suntir a lot. <laughs> uh, Suntir drink. I should be freaking drunk by now, right? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I still got the cold that is going around my house here. Um, so just know that, that when you're playing against defenders, how, you know, think of a battle plan on how you're going to go up against defenders. Think of a battle plan on how you're actually going to go up against um, party bus and, ju- and jump masters. I mean, you know, hounds, you know, they got one agility. They're going to go down real fast if you have three ships shooting at them, especially if you got your, your, your extra munitions and all that stuff. But you don't have a lot of maneuverability like a jump master does with the bower roll capabilities of a jump master. But what you do have is that pivot wing. So you got to use that to your strength. So keep that in mind. Now, is it a top tier list, this list right here, competitively? I would never say a list is not top tier because you never know. I mean, I've seen, you know, think about Dangaroo. Who knew, who in the world thought Dangaroo was going to be a thing, right? Um, it's... But the dice modification that you have, especially with casting, if you can keep casting alive, especially into the late game, it's going to be brutal. If you can, you know, if you can use your basically your pathfinders as cannon fodder and basically let them take all the heat and keep casting at bay and wait for that prime moment to send advanced proton torpedoes. And if you have a choice to send advanced proton torpedoes between between a big ship and an ace or something like that. Use it against that ace. And reason why is because ace is going to be harder to pin down. If you got it in your sights and you have advanced proton torpedoes, but you said your hounds, you know, the hound or whatever you go up against is a large base ship. It's got a lot of health to chew through. Forget about that. With your pivot wing and your abilities, you're able to maneuver more probably with that against a hound and potentially a lawful rebel a lot easier than... Um, than than you, uh, than they can against you. So keep that in mind. If you have an opportunity to shoot at an ace and it's sitting in front of you, and you want to send a lot of ordnance that way, do it if you can. Uh, but remember, be careful when they token up. But use those other pathfinders as blocking. You know, blockers. That's why you. That's why I'm saying you see you have the two pathfinders here. You have Cassian here. One up, move Cassian under. One up again. You should have enough room to do a two, I believe. Um, I have to figure that out and look at that mechanics. But as long as if you have Cassian on the bottom of the board, it should work. Um, and then you just keep Cassian behind those, those guys, and when they try to go behind you, Cassian, you can turn around and advance proton, advance proton torpedo them, range one, because if they're doing a K-turn, more likely they're going to be in front of you. So, anyway, I can go on and on about that. All right, so Sergeant Rafen, I really appreciate you submitting this list. Um, it was a great list. I actually love it. And I'm actually kind of glad that we're doing a list review. We haven't done one in a long time. We've been doing, doing a lot of playing of actual the games and talking about articles and stuff, but I want to get to the roots and we're actually, because of some of the software that I do have here, we're actually going to be, um, doing a lot of Skype channels and that's that whole team SBG thing that you guys keep hearing about. What I want to start doing is having some hangouts, you know, with you guys, all the guys that are talking about stuff, actually talk and have you guys in the Skype channels, the software that I just got right now that I've been upgraded to spent the, spent a lot of token money to get this software, but the software allows me to pull in Skype, pull in the different ch- um, channels and we can actually have talks. And also I want to do some matches online. I want to have some vassal stuff. That's what team SBG also. We want to do some vassal leagues, um, maybe some destiny stuff. We can do destiny on tabletop simulator or stuff like that. Good stuff like that. But anyway, all right. What do you guys think of the list? How would you guys tweak it? How would you fly it? How would you fly against this list? And also, what do you think about the meta against this list? Leave it in the comments in the description below. Also, you can leave it in the comments in the description or in the description. Let me rephrase that. Leave it in the forum uh, as a comment in the forum link below to this actual list. And let Sergeant Rafin know what you think. And definitely, if you have some tweaks, let him know. This is all about growing the list, tweaking the list, and playing the list and making it feel good. And when you feel good, you win. And it's awesome stuff. All right. Facebook, 
uh, Twitter, Instagram, all the links are below. Also, check out our community forum, also our main site, slingpaint.com. Also, if you guys like what we do, subscribe to the channel. There's that little button right there, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you're not going to get alerts when we go live and all that fun stuff. But if you are subscribed, when we go live, you can get part of the chat. You can watch on your phone. You can do all this cool stuff. When we're doing videos, we love to hang out and just play the games and the games that we love. Um, definitely subscribe to the channel. Also, if you like what we do, support our channel. There's two ways. you can, Actually, three ways you can do support our channel. You can do the fan funding. If you click that card up on the top right there and you want to send us some money or some way to help us out, buy some more equipment and do some more stuff and buy some more pieces and you name it, um, that's one way. The other way is Patreon. Patreon are links below for our Patreon account. But um, I would hold off onto Team SBG because Team SBG is going to be where you guys can help um, uh, be a part of something and you're paying a little bit to be a part of something, but that actually helps us with the equipment and stuff. And in the last case, if you guys like the tokens, if you see the tokens, I mean, we're selling a lot of these tokens. Everybody's loving them. Destiny, Tanks, um, X-Wing, you name it. All the tokens we're selling. Check out the links below for the store. Our Etsy store and our Store Envy store have all full our full list of all of our tokens and all of our goodies also our t-shirt store check that out as well all right that was another edition of slink paint if you guys don't have any questions which i don't think you do you guys have been just talking it up between each other i love it um yeah that's it all right i'm gonna wrap this up if you guys again have any questions leave it in the comments below thanks guys and i'm actually gonna sign off tonight because it's getting late yeah oh wow it's almost midnight already um, tokens are badass. Thanks, Seamus. I need to get a hold of you again for my tank tokens. Yep, yeah, let me know, man. Uh, hit me up on the thing. We can get something going. Um, this entire review had me smiling. Can't believe I got reviewed. Sergeant Rafen, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks again. All right, guys. Peace. Have a good night. Don't let the big bug bite. All that fun stuff.